What's up, guys? Rick from DFS On Demand here with the one and done preview for the RBC Heritage. Uh, before we jump into that, let's look back at last week for the Masters. Tiger dons the green jacket and wins two million bucks for a lot of owners in the Gups Corner. One and done. So, the highest owned golfers of the week, uh, Rory led the way, 493 picks, which I think. Don't quote me on this. I can go back and check. Um, this is one of the higher numbers we've seen all year, 493. Getting close to 500, that's that's a pretty big number, especially in a stacked field. A lot of people using Rory trying to get the career grand slam wrapped up. Uh, they were a little bit disappointed because, what, he finished, uh, I don't know what the amount that he came in with, but, um, you know, was never really in contention of this thing with when you, which, with when which when you use Rory at the Masters, uh, you're hoping for him to, to bring you home a big paycheck. The next highest zone golfer, 481 picks, uh, trunk slammed it, Justin Rose, and took everyone with him. Uh, ruined my DFS lineups, that's for sure. But I avoided him in the one and done, luckily. Uh, then after that, you get into some pretty good returns. Dustin Johnson, the third most popular golfer finishes what second or third, uh, tiger is the fourth highest owned golfer. 260 owners capture that $2 million. Pretty, pretty good. Um, where we came in, uh, I loved our ownership, right? We ended up getting Tony Finau with 34 other people. And when he was tied for first after, what, two or three rounds, um, you know, we are really loving this, right? If he goes out and wins this thing and 35 of us get 2 million bucks, we are absolutely in it. Fades a little bit on Sunday. I'll show you what he ended up with. And then we also had Bubba, who uh, 60 of us had Bubba, returned us a couple hundred thousand dollars, but a lot of big guns up top you know, to contend with, we didn't get, we didn't get as much as we would have liked. So I'm, I'm happy to get $400,000 from Finau would have loved the 2 million, of course, because we had him at such a great ownership, but that pushes our season long lineup to 1,030th. Again, just always continually hovering around that top, you know, 33% or so. And then our uh, week by week lineup, which has just not gone well is in 25 10th, 2,510th place even after the $200,000 from Bubba. Um, I think I said this last week or in, in weeks past, I highly encourage you to make a lineup that is where you set it for the season. Not only do you just kind of set it and forget it, um, mine has done twice as good, right? It's done infinitely better. It, it was a really good thought practice. I love it. So for this week at the RBC Heritage, um, here is uh, the one and done tool. There's a few studs in the field with DJ uh, Jordan Spieth actually with a very high expected value here uh, because of his uh, long-term form. Kucher is here. Kucher is going to be extremely popular. Although I wonder because Kucher has been owned I, like Kucher's popular every single week. So how many people have not used him yet? Um, I might, I might look this up. So go, go follow me on Twitter. I'll tweet this out. I want to see what Kucher's ownership for the year is right now because um, he's got to be pretty popular every single week, but this would be a really great spot to use him. Where I'm going to go is a little bit, and actually, if you look at this, um, let's see, Jordan Spieth, what's his expected value this week? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of a weird situation because it's not a, it's not a great field, right? Um, but it's also not a super weak field where I would say you need to have one of these top guys, that whole situation where get one of these guys who is like eight to one to win and just take your million bucks when he wins it. Um, I don't think it's really that type of situation because there are probably 10 really good golfers in this field. Um, I'm going to go and try to be a little bit of a, a contrarian in my weekly pick where I'm going to take um, Francesco Molinari, who is obviously playing well, right? He was the leading the masters with six holes to go. Um, accurate driver of the golf ball, which you're going to need to be super accurate this week off the tee with tree line fairways all over the place at Harbor town. Great on approaches, which you're going to need to dial up this week. And I assume that the vast majority of the public is going to stay away from him. Uh, if you look at this in a vacuum and you take, Molinari's finish, which I don't even know what he finished at. This is the Tiger Woods effect. I don't even know where the rest of these guys finished last week. 
Did DJ finish T2 third by himself? I don't know. Um, did Molinari finish in the top five? I think he did, like T5 probably. But the 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 vacuum just sucks to Tiger where it's like, I don't even know what else happened. Um, if you look at this and say, okay, if before the week started, you would have said, okay, Molinari gives you a top five, you would have been thrilled with it, right? You would have been stoked for him. But the fact of the way he does it, where he leads with, you know, six holes to go, hits it into the water, hits it into the water again, makes a couple doubles. Um, that is going to be deemed as a failure. And because of that, a lot of owners are going to stay away from him. I'm going to try to pivot and go grab him and try to get one of the top players in the field at a very, very low number. That's my goal. Um, now in our season long or in our, yeah, where we picked it before the season, we had Paul Casey scheduled here, which would have made sense, right? Accurate guy off the tee. Um, you know, would have been able to throw darts. Hasn't been playing that well, but uh, he's not teeing it up here. So we do have to make a switch. This is only the second time this has happened this year. Uh, the first time we did it, I believe we swapped Rory and Kepka. When one of those guys wasn't in the field, we swapped those two like it was like the next week. I don't have a great swap that I'd want to make this week. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a guy that I did not have in my season-long uh, picks before the year started. Um, and that's going to be Jim Furyk, and I'll show you why. Driving accuracy, one of the critical stats from this week, and I go over this way more in depth in the DFS video. One of the critical stats for this week, Jim Furyk is head and shoulders above the field in driving accuracy. Um, a great iron player, right? He's going to be able to hit his irons into these, into these greens. He's a former champion here. He really just checks off all the boxes for me. So he would, did not make the cut of my players that I'm going to play in my season long when I did this back in January. But because I have an opportunity where I need to replace Paul Casey, and we can maybe find another spot for Paul Casey later if he starts to turn it around, um, or if someone else you know, doesn't play an event that we have it lined up, this feels like a really good spot to get Jim Furyk. So I'm going to roster him. We're going to see what happens. Uh, let me know who you're playing. It's at DFS On Demand, or leave a comment below. I'll talk to you guys later. See ya.